friendlies, I'm Carolyn, and welcome back to part two of my video series explaining all the different types of vehicles that you can live in. I'm pretty exhausted. I've been doing nothing but editing for two days. I had no idea how big this video was when I was shooting it. It's about two hours of video footage <laughs> and I've managed to pare the second half down to 40 minutes and with the help of my patrons I decided to make it two videos and I really do think there's a lot of really relevant really helpful content in this video series for anybody who is looking for an RV to live in to travel in looking to upgrade downgrade or or whatever. Today's video, I'm going to be covering trailers, travel trailers, fifth wheels, and truck campers. So stay tuned. I did, went through all the pros and cons of those three types of vehicle vehicles. I also talked about sliders because a lot of people ask me why I didn't get sliders. So I talk about that. I also share some information because I hear from a lot of people who have mobility challenges, handicaps. I'm sorry if that's not the right way to say it. Um, if that's not politically correct, I think it's person's with disabilities, I think is what it is, what it is. but I do cover that in this video and also the next video, part three, which is class B, class B plus, and vans. So stay tuned for part three, but right now, get that pen and paper out because I'm gonna go through all the pros and cons of everything you need to know if you're considering a trailer or a truck camper. Before we get into truck campers, let's talk about travel trailers and fifth wheels first. And uh, first I'm gonna jump into the pros of a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. Uh, I think the biggest pro about uh, having something that you pull is that you're gonna have a vehicle. You have a truck that you can drive around, you can unhitch the trailer, you can go into town, you can go sightseeing, you can run errands, and you can do all of that in a regular passenger vehicle, in a truck. And that's a huge benefit for a lot of people. And in fact, a lot of people ask me about that. Don't you miss having you know, a vehicle? And yeah, I do. Today, for example, I have to go into town. Actually, I have to get propane, so I have to take my RV. <laughs> but if I just want to run to the grocery store, if I want to go sightseeing, I have to pack everything up and I have to go. If I had a truck and a trailer, I could just drop the trailer, put everything inside, and I could drive the truck into town and still secure my spot. What a lot of people do is if they have a Class A or a Class C, of course, is they tow a vehicle and that's called a towed, T-O-A-D. T-O-W-E-D, I don't know. And, and that solves that problem. You can leave the Class A or the Class C behind and you can take the toad with you into town to run your air and something smaller, something better on gas. So yeah, I do feel a little limited sometimes in my Class C. I can't go too off-road. And that brings me to another benefit of having a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. If your pull vehicle is a four by four, you can go to a lot more places, especially in a smaller trailer or fifth wheel that I can't go in a class A or class C or that you wouldn't be able to go to in a van. Uh, having a travel trailer gives you the option of getting a four, a four wheel drive vehicle that you can really go exploring in. And, and that brings me to another plus of having a travel trailer. You can, you can decide, you get to choose what vehicle you want to pull your home, right? If you buy a Class A or a Class C, you, you're limited by the engines and the chassis that they offer, which are usually Ford and Chevy. If I had my way, I'd be driving a Toyota. I've always driven Toyotas. I love Toyota. And, <laughs> you know, the experiences I've had with Ford kind of um, really make me miss my Toyota. And if, you, if you're going to have a travel trailer, you can choose whatever vehicle you want and whatever your preference is to the type of vehicle that you drive, you're going to have a lot more options. I think that's a huge benefit to having a travel trailer. Another benefit of a travel trailer is that you might be able to pull it with what you currently have. And you can get travel trailers, small ones, used extremely inexpensively. So if you've got a vehicle that can tow a trailer, you're halfway there already. And I actually thought about that when I first started out. I was driving a 2006 Toyota Avalon with a V8 engine and I thought, yeah, this might be able to pull something. And I looked up the towing capacity and it was not very good. <laughs> so I really couldn't pull a travel trailer, unfortunately, because I actually did look at that in the beginning because it would have saved me some money. I had a great car. I had bought it brand new. I had maintained it really well. It was a Toyota. It had 100,000 miles on it, but it would have driven forever. I had a lot of faith in that vehicle and the, that was a huge selling point for me. Having faith in the vehicle that I was driving and then just pulling something behind me, that is a huge benefit. 
And if you have a truck or if you have even a car with a better towing capacity or you can get a small enough trailer, that is a really big benefit of having a trailer that you can pull. And a lot of travel trailers, like I said, the older ones that you buy used are pretty inexpensive to purchase. So that's another benefit. If you don't have a lot of budget up front, you might be able, if you, if you have a vehicle and you don't have a lot of budget up front, uh, that could be a good option for you. However, if you don't have something, a, a vehicle that you can tow a trailer with, and you're thinking about living this nomadic life and you need to buy everything, that can be a huge deal breaker. You'd have to buy the tow vehicle and then you'd have to buy the trailer. And that could get pretty expensive. And I think that was part of the reason I decided to go with an all-in-one. I would have had to sell my car, buy a truck, and then also buy a trailer. So when I talked about all-in-one very at the beginning, I think that's what I was thinking. Uh, that was just a lot more to deal with. And instead, what I did is I didn't sell my car right away, but I just put my car in storage and I just had to buy one thing. I didn't have to buy a truck and then a trailer. And with my budget, I only had $10,000. It was just more than I wanted to deal with. So with my budget for $10,000, it made sense for me to buy an all-in-one. And that is, if you don't have an unlimited budget to start out with, that could be a, another uh, reason to go with something that's all in one rather than buying a truck and having to buy a trailer on top of it. But if you've already got a tow vehicle, a trailer could be a great option. Another pro of a tow of a, tra a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, you're going to have all the amenities that I that I mentioned earlier that you have in a Class A and a Class C. You're going to have a full kitchen. You're going to have a full bath, and you're going to have a lot of windows. You're going to have the roof you're going to have the headroom, you're going to have a lot of the same benefits in a travel trailer that you're going to have in a class A or a class C. Now let's talk about some of the cons of a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. Let's start with a fifth wheel. I think one of the biggest cons of a fifth wheel is that you're going to have to get your truck set up to be able to hold the fifth wheel and that's an added expense. You're also going to have to learn how to line it up, how to hitch it up and for a lot of people that's more than they want to deal with and that's probably one of the biggest cons of a fifth wheel. The other one also is you, they're huge. The vertical clearance on some of those especially is really really high and that can be a problem especially traveling east of the Mississippi. There were a lot of really low bridges, narrow bridges and if you have that giant, you've seen them, the giant huge fifth fifth wheels with the overhead. Sure, they're nice and comfortable to live in, but for traveling in, they can be really problematic. And not just bridges, but if you're out boondocking a lot than I am, you've got issues with trees and, you know, trying to maneuver uh, through and around and under trees. That is a, a huge consideration if you're going to be boondocking. If you're going to be doing RV parks and campgrounds, that may not matter to you. But the, the vertical clearance on fifth wheels is definitely going to be a consideration. It's getting warm out here. I'd take off my jacket and get away from the sun. The second con of a travel trailer or a fifth wheel is that they can be really hard to drive. Uh, if you're intimidated, if you're a shy driver, if you don't have a lot of experience, pulling a tow vehicle behind you or pulling a tow trailer can be a huge consideration, something that really uh, can be a huge deal breaker. They are, they, they can be, especially travel trailers, I heard are the least stable of all of the options for mobile living that there are. They sway a lot in the wind. Yeah, you can get sway bars, but then you've got added costs and, and added things to deal with. But they can be challenging on mountain roads. They can be challenging for backing up. They can be challenging in high winds. Uh, they can be challenging for maneuvering on off-road if that's what you choose to do. There are a, they could they are the most challenging to drive. Uh, another question I get asked a lot is, do you need a special license to drive any of these? towing a vehicle, you're going to need to get some practice uh, or just, you know, on the job training, I guess, right? But it's going to take some getting used to. That is not an easy thing to drive. And everybody I know who drive, who pulls a vehicle has a story about having to unhitch in the middle of an intersection because they got stuck or whatever. Driving it is going to be a challenge. That's a huge con. 
dropping the hitch is also an, another hassle. For me, all I have to do is pull in, get level, and that's it, start setting up home. If you're driving a tow vehicle, I guess you don't always have to unhitch, but if you're gonna be driving into town, then yeah, you gotta unhitch. So I talked earlier about how uh, a benefit of having a trailer is that you can unhitch the truck and drive around. Well, that can also be a con because then you have the hassle of having to hitch it back up, especially if it's a fifth wheel, having to line it up, having to get it right. Everybody that I have talked to who has a travel trailer talks about the hassle of hitching and unhitching. It's a process and it takes a little extra time. Uh, and in addition to the packing up that I have to do, you still have to do all the packing up and securing things and putting your outside chairs away and your mat and putting everything in your cupboard so that when you drive, it doesn't break and smash all over the place. You still have all that with a travel trailer. Plus, you have the extra hassle of having to rehitch and get it aligned and all of the other things. So that can be a con for a lot of people too with a travel trailer. But the biggest con... The biggest drawback to me, again, goes back to safety and comfort of a travel trailer is the fact that you can't go from driving space to living space without without exiting the vehicle. I just really don't like that. Not only for safety, but also comfort and livability and drivability. The same thing if you're pulling a vehicle uh, and you wanna stop for a snack or you wanna stop to go to the bathroom, you have to get out of your truck go around to the outside, unlock the door, and go inside. And if you have slides, this is a huge thing. I was going to cover it at the end. But if you, a lot of the travel trailers with slides, you can't even get to the bathroom in the kitchen with the slides in. You're looking at something with slides. Make sure you know whether or not you can access the things that you need to live comfortably without putting out the slides. Imagine you have to stay in a Walmart. You're, what, you're gonna be in the middle of the Walmart parking lot and put your slides out? How obvious is that? That is a huge deal breaker for me and that's why I didn't want slides. Number one, it's just a hassle. Um, I wanna be able to pull off on the side of the road, just go in the back, go to the bathroom, and you can't do that in a travel trailer and then you add slides on top of that and you ha you can't even move around inside the trailer without putting the slides out. So that's just completely inconvenient for me. Uh, you don't wanna be in the middle of a parking lot or if you have to stealth camp, you know, even in a travel trailer, let's say you need to just kind of fly under the radar one night and stealth camp, but you can't go to the bathroom or use your kitchen without putting the slides out. Huge deal breaker, huge drawback in my opinion. Again though, if you're gonna be going from um, RV park to RV park or campground to campground and doing mostly highway driving, then that may not matter to you. For me and my lifestyle and the way I live, uh, that's just not something I wanna deal with. Slides also have a lot of issues with leaks and braking and not working and it's just a big hassle. When I got my new RV, a lot of people said, why didn't you get a slide? Well, for one thing, I don't need the extra space. I'm very comfortable with what the space I have. And number two, I just didn't want to deal with all that hassle. But I digressed because the, the, the biggest con I was talking about is how you can't go from driving space to living space. But the slide's an extra layer of inconvenience on not being able to go from driving space to living space easily. And again, if you're on route, if you're on a big road trip and you want to go from the front to the back to make a sandwich, you can't do that in a travel trailer. And then you add a slide on top of that and you have to put the slide out even to go to the bathroom or get to the kitchen. Uh, big, huge uh, con for me. Something to think about. So let's talk about truck campers. I did consider a truck camper. Again, I like the idea of having a truck. And so I thought, well, that's the perfect solution for me. I'll get a truck and I'll just put a camper on top. And uh, it seemed like the perfect solution. The truck campers, a lot of them are really nice. Some of those do have slides, so they're very spacious. And I think that's another benefit. They're compact, but they have really a lot of living space and they're laid out really well. I really like truck campers and how they look. The benefit is that you have your truck, you can drop, drop the camper, and a lot of the same benefits of having a travel trailer. They're comfortable, you have holding tanks, 
you have all the amenities. Another benefit of a truck camper is that you can have a four wheel drive camper, which is really hard to come by. You can't get it in a class C, you can't get it in a class A, but you can get that in a truck camper. Just put a truck camper on a four wheel drive and you can go as remote as you want. <laughs> that is a huge uh, selling point for me and one of the reasons I was really considering a truck camper. But here's why I did not choose a truck camper and we'll talk about the cons. Uh, I didn't like, I don't know, it just felt top heavy to me. I didn't, I've never driven one, full disclosure here, but I just, it didn't feel the, the, for the big size ones that I wanted, um, you know, to really be comfortable in my home. It just, it, it didn't look right to me. It didn't, it didn't seem to me that it would drive well, uh, especially on the bumpy roads that I like to go on the off-roading. It just felt like it would be squirrely to me. And in fact, I did do some research and if you don't have the right suspension on the tow vehicle, on the vehicle that you're carrying the camper, you can have a lot of problems with stability. So that is a factor. It can be unstable if it's not done right. You're really going to need to make sure you pair the camper because the camper, the truck campers come in all different shapes and sizes, all different levels of comfort and amenities. And you're gonna, really going to need to make sure you pair that with the appropriate vehicle if you want to be doing off-roading and you really want to make sure you have a stable vehicle to drive and live in. So that's going to be something that you're really going to need to consider. Another uh, downside of that of a truck camper is you're not going to have a lot of storage. They're, they're small, they're compact. You're not going to have a lot of storage. You have the same issue with a truck camper that you have in a tractor trailer. You can't go from living space to truck cab uh, easily. If something happens in the middle of the night and you need to make a quick escape, you got to go out the back door and walk all the way around to your truck. And I thought about that in a travel trailer. In a, yeah, if you're in a travel trailer or you're in that, what if somebody blocks your door? You're trapped inside. Sure, somebody could block me. They could park in front of me, but you know, they'd have a, 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 a yeah, I would, <laughs> I would ram them to death until I got out. That's what I think. So, I mean, no solution is perfect, but the bottom line is you're probably going to be safe out here no matter what you live in. But that is a drawback for me. And another, uh, another con of the truck camper is that you can't go between living space and the driving space without going outside. A couple other considerations of a truck camper that I want to bring up, uh, especially for people who have mobility issues or handicap. I get a lot of questions from people who have handicaps or are disabled in some way and they say, how can I live this lifestyle? Am I going to be able to? I don't really know. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I don't have experience with that. But what I will say, what I have noticed from the truck campers is that if you do have mobility issues or you are handicapped or disabled, a truck camper is probably going to be really challenging to live in. For number one, what I have noticed is getting in them is really high and really steep. They're high up in the truck bed, so there's a very steep stair getting in there, and that can be a real challenge for somebody who has mobility challenges. The other thing is I believe the bed in those is also raised. Uh, you have to go up a couple steps even to get into bed. So again, if you have mobility issues, that could be a big challenge for you. So for that reason, I think a truck camper it would probably not work work for somebody who's handicapped or has mobility issues. It's too steep to get up into, and then again, you have to climb steps to get into the bed. Even my RV, here, can I do that real quick? Look at that. Even my RV is pretty steep. And oh, and if you have older pets, that's gonna be a consideration, not just your mobility issues, but mobility of an older pet. Capone is already having issues getting in and out of the rig. Sometimes when he's really tired, I kind of have to lift his hind legs up. And uh, even in a class A or a class C, you, you could probably get a ramp, but the steps tend to be pretty steep. But if you have mobility issues, if you have an older pet, you're definitely not gonna wanna do a truck camper. A class A or a class C could still be a little challenging for getting in and out of. I even have to use the bar for getting out of because it's so steep. And uh, that is going to be something that you're going to need to think about. I hope that you got a wealth of information on tractor trailers, fifth wheels, and truck campers today to help you in your decision making for choosing something to live in or travel in. Stay tuned for part three, which is going to cover 
vans, including Class B, Class B Plus, and regular passenger vans. Be sure to subscribe below and click the little bell to be notified when that video comes out, or click up here for the playlist with all the videos in this series. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you got a lot of really helpful information out of it. I'll see you for part three, and until then, be happy, be free, and be kind. Thank <laughs> you.